Hey friend, Graham here from RecordingRevolution.com and welcome to part four of our How to Mix a Song from Scratch mini-series. I'm showing you how to take the raw recordings that you've done in your software of choice in your home studio and how to step-by-step -step treat those pieces of audio and turn them into a more radio-ready mix. In this series, I'm using a free piece of software right here called Pro Tools First. You can use any DAW or recording or mixing software you like. I'm just teaching you the concepts they applied to really any software, so it really doesn't matter. So far, we've done a lot of really fun and important things. We've done a, a volume balance and a static mix. We have done mix bus processing. We've used EQ on our tracks, and we we're already making a big difference so far on the mix. Today, however, we're going to talk about compression, and compression is so, so helpful as a mixer, and it's yet a mysterious tool that a lot of people either ruin their mixes with, or they just avoid entirely because they don't know how to use it, or they use it and don't know if it's doing anything, but you hear people talk about compressors a lot, and there's a reason for that, but I want to demystify a compressor for you today and show you how you can use it to make a track like, let's say, a vocal cut through the mix nicely and be up front and in your face. And it's a really, really simple tool once you understand what's going on. Today, I'm in Pro Tools first. Like I said, I'm going to flip over here um, on the window uh, menu to the mix window so I can actually see all the inserts with my plugins. These are the same tracks again, going from left to right that we're going top to bottom. And if you look at this row here, this all says EQ, EQ, EQ. These are all the EQs I've used so far to mix the song. And the only compressor I have here was on the mix bus or the master fader, and that was on our second video. Today though, I'm gonna show you how to really process compression a little bit more, and let's grab the lead vocal. So let's see where we are in the song. I was on the inside of a murderous mob. We stood up for what's right, at least in our own eyes. Never stop to consider what a mess we become. So if you listen to the lead vocal there, you notice that some words I can hear fine, some words then get too quiet and you want to turn it up. Uh, and then if you were to move, let's say, to the next chorus, uh, even with the double vocal and the background vocals muted, you would still hear the vocals a little bit more fine now because it's louder. Not spending the rest of my life holding on to what I've got. Well, even there, part of that vocal you can hear fine, but then the last line holding on to what I've done, that we're done, seems to get too quiet. This is a problem with a lot of audio. It's very dynamic. It's loud and quiet. It's hard to hear it perfectly at all times. How do we hear music perfectly at all times on our favorite songs, especially when it comes to things like vocals? Well, the answer, my friend, is compression. Compression is the thing that contains the vocal and makes it one more consistent volume the whole way through. It is a super helpful tool, and it's the secret to making your vocals sound more radio ready. So what I'm gonna do is up here on my vocal track, you see I already have an EQ. I already did a little bit of EQ on this vocal. And what I wanna do now is take that track that's a little more cleaned up, and I want to insert a compressor right after it to help with this volume problem. So I'm going to grab under the Dynamics tab, the stock compressor here in Pro Tools. And I'll move this right here to the side. Bunch of knobs, graphs, meters. Ugh, it might be overwhelming. Don't be overwhelmed. Let me show you how simple this is. What we're going to do is contain this vocal. I'm going to solo the vocal here. Most important thing you need to understand is the default settings will probably not be good for you no matter what it is. Um, so I want you to understand how to use a compressor. And really all a compressor is is an automatic volume knob. It's one really helpful way to think about it. So let's automate the volume of something using something like a compressor. I'm going to take the threshold knob and dial it up to the top. Little tip, if the threshold is all the way at zero, meaning the top of the meter, that means you're telling the compressor only compress what crosses this threshold, which will be nothing, because this is as high as audio can go. So with this threshold at zero, it doesn't matter how 
fast or slow the attack or release is or what the ratio is or the knee or any of that that gibberish. <laughs> what matters is the fact that actually there's no compression happening. Take a look. I'm not spending the rest of my life holding on to what I've done. It's not really doing anything. What we need to do to get this to work is pull the threshold down till it starts to touch where the actual audio is, and then you will see some gain reduction, GR here, uh, gain reduction happening. That's actually then the compressor turning down audio. So if you see it, the meter come down to minus three, that means that the compressor is turning my vocal down by three dB at the loudest point or by six dB or 12 or whatever it would be. So for ratio, let's leave it at three to one. I think anything from two to one to four to one is great for something to start out with, very neutral. Uh, th these attack and release settings are pretty neutral. I might go a little bit faster here on a vocal um, and maybe keep the release where it is. And then let's just start pulling the threshold down and see what happens. I'm not spending the rest of my life Holding on to what I've done I won't carry the weight of my crimes, yeah I just bury it, I won't put out the fire tonight I light it up and let it burn, I won't silence the truth in a night, yeah So you can see the loudest points, the most this compressor is turning down my vocal is 5 dB, maybe it, it touched 6 dB Okay, so I like to look for, let's say, vocals to compress at 3 to 6 dB, which stands for decibels, at the loudest point. So I like to go to the chorus of the song or the hook, wherever the vocal is really getting after it at the most, and find where can I turn down those loud peaks, 3 to 6 dB. Now, what have I done? All I've done is made my vocal quieter. You can look at it. Here's the input knob. Here's the output knob. And you can see how much quieter the output is. I'm not spending the rest of my life Holding on to what I've done I won't carry the weight of my crimes, yeah Now that's not what we want to do. We don't want to make our vocal quieter. We want to actually make it louder or make really the quiet parts louder. And this is the second part of why a compressor is helpful. What we've done is told the compressor, please turn down the vocal anytime it gets really loud. But if you notice, it's not always turning down the vocal. On the quiet lines, it's not doing any compression. Watch the gain reduction meter and you'll notice which words it does not compress. I'm not spending the rest of my life Holding on to what I've done I won't carry the weight of my crimes, yeah I just bury it So the quiet words like done and bury it, it doesn't turn down at all. It keeps them right where they are, but it's only turning down the loud parts. So what we've done is basically taken this vocal that's way up and then way down, and we've reduced it so it's all at a more consistent volume, albeit quieter than we'd like. And that's where this final knob, gain, or makeup gain, it might be called in your compressor, is helpful because now we can turn back up the whole vocal track to match the volume it was going into the compressor. So now, the loud parts are just as loud as they were, but the quiet parts are now equal with those. So let's turn up the gain knob and I'll watch the output meter here to make sure I'm now matching the input here. I'm not spending the rest of my life Holding on to what I've done I won't carry the weight of my crimes, yeah I just bury it, I won't put out the fire tonight I light it up and let it burn, I won't silence the truth in a night yeah. I won't bury it Let's try it again I'm not spending the rest of my life Holding on to what I've done I won't carry the weight of my crimes, yeah I just bury it I won't put out the fire tonight All right, so now we have a more consistent volume on the vocal. 
Let's pull this into context on the verse. Let's go back to where we were originally, bring it in with a mix, and let's see if we can hear all the words of this vocal a little bit better. I was on the inside of a murderous mob. We stood up for what's right, at least in our own eyes. Never stopped to consider what a mess we've become. Throwing out what is wise for what feels good. So there we have it much more contained, much more up front. Let's compare. Let's go back and we'll then bypass the compressor on and off and you hear where it came from. Again, certain words will sound about the same volume, but other words would have gotten lost. I was on the inside of a murderous mob. We stood up for what's right, at least in our own eyes. Never stopped to consider what a mess we'd become. Throwing out what is wise for what feels good. And there you go. Compression is so, so helpful. The key here is to understand why. Why are you using it? And for vocals, this is how I like to approach it. You can do the same thing on an acoustic guitar that might strum nice and loud for a moment, and then it gets buried and it's inconsistent. So I use it for inconsistencies on a bass guitar, on a vocal, on a keyboard, on a piano. Anything that's not loud enough or then too loud one moment and it varies, compressors kind of rein that in and then present everything at a more consistent volume. It also helps create energy and punch because now everything is really a little bit more upfront and like presented better than it was before. And that is the power of a compressor. Now, there are a lot of other things I could teach you about compression, and I've put together something that might really help you as you're working on your mix. I have seven steps that I walk through when it comes to compression, understanding all the knobs, understanding how to use it on different circumstances. And I've taught that in other places before, but what I've done for you is put it all together into one simple PDF that you can download. It's a checklist. It's a compression checklist for you, and it's absolutely free. Uh, to download it, just go to compression7.com. Compression7.com, I'll put the link here in the video and then in the description box for you. And what this will literally walk you through is things we talked about today, understanding the threshold and the ratio and the gain reduction, but how to use a compressor to enhance every track in your mix. And again, these subtle moves really add up. Once we get some compression on all the rest of the tracks, you're going to notice everything pop a little bit more, especially if we were to take away all the compression in the end, you'll notice that, wow, this mix fell flat. And we'll look at that as we progress in this series. So go download the free compression checklist at Compression7.com is my gift to you. I think it'll help you as we move forward in this video series. The next video, I'm going to walk you through things like reverb and delay, how to create a sense of space and ambience and a, that studio polish to your tracks that probably sound dry and small because they were recorded in a home studio like mine. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss the next video. Other than that, my friend, 
Have fun experimenting with compression in your mixes, in your software, and I will see you on the next video.